Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev and in this video we're going to be having a look at when distinct is evaluated within a query. So I'm going to start off by creating a very simple table called customer. It's got two columns in there, first name and last name, both strings and we're going to insert just a small amount of sample data. If you do want to follow along with this video, the scripts are available in the description. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this query now, just to show what the results look like first of all. So as we can see, we've got some duplicates within the data. We can see Sarah Power uh, has a duplicate. Nathan Jones actually exists four times in the, in the data. And Michelle Arnold three times. So typically our approach is if we want to get a, a unique result set, uh, we'd use the word distinct. So I'm just going to add that to our query. And if I highlight that and execute the query, we can now see that we are in fact getting unique results. Now, what I wanted to show in this video is understanding when distinct is evaluated. So let's talk through uh, a scenario and say we needed to add a unique identifier to these rows. And for that, we're going to use row number. So we're going to write out row underscore number, open and close parentheses, uh, over clause and we're going to order by first name last name and we're going to alias that as Ronan and put the comma on the end so if I was to run this query now and have a look at that result I can see that I've actually increased the rows so I still have my distinct as part of the query but now that I'm identifying, now that I've put in a unique identifier, it's actually brought back the duplicates. So when we are working with distinct, we must remember that the, the columns within the select are done first, sometimes called the projection stage. And then once those results are generated, that is when the unique rows are calculated on top of that. So in this case it makes sense that when once we introduce a unique identifier and we're running distinct within the query that we would get nine results in this case apart from the other than the original three that we were expecting. So let's have a look at the correct way to write this query. Let's say we do want to return our distinct customers, but then we do want to add a unique identifier. So we're going to remove the row number from the initial query. We'll go back to our distinct, so we've got three. And what we're going to actually introduce here uh, into the query is a derived table. So what we're going to do is write another select and our select is going to be from this query result set, which should be clear once I write this out. So again, we're writing out our row number exactly the same as we did before. We're ordering by first name and last name. And we're going to alias that as row num. And then we're going to select the first name and the last name and then we're going to put from open parentheses here to indicate this is a derived table close parentheses after the query and give that an alias as D I'll just hide the results grid to show that on screen so the derived table is going to return the unique set of first name and last name and then we're going to be selecting from that derived table and adding a unique identifier using row number and if we have a look at those query results there 
we can see that that is exactly the results we are expecting. So it's important to understand that once the select has finished retrieving all the columns to meet the criteria, once that's done the projection stage, it's at that point the unique combinations of values are then processed and returned. So I'll just show that query again. So we're going to be within our derived table we have our unique combinations of first name and last name and then we're going to be selecting from there and using our row number to add a unique identifier. So I hope that has helped uh, your understanding of when distinct is evaluated within T-SQL. Thanks a lot for watching the video. If there are any videos you'd like me to put up on the channel or any areas you're struggling with, please do let me know in the comments. If you're not a subscriber to the channel and you are interested in data engineering or data analysis, then subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thanks a lot for watching.